Stories, fables, ghostly tales. Two cellmates seem to hit it off with each other, sharing interests, passion, and a love for what they used to enjoy doing day in and day out. Killing. Someone has caught a seriously deadly case of the flu, an extremely contagious case, and a detective is just trying to find some answers from a killer without a conscience. Welcome listeners, I'm your Telltaller, and today we have three stories all written by Patrick McNamara, a listener just like yourself who leapt headfirst into writing stories to chill and creep you out. This is an explicit episode, not for little kitty ears, so please at least don't blare this one out loud. <laughs> Be mindful, of course, with those around you. Our stories in order are A Cannibal and a Vampire, I Feel Very Sick, and Please Stop Laughing. These stories are great, and I hope you enjoy them. Patrick has a way of creating unique and memorable characters, so pour yourself a delicious Earl Grey. Turn off the lights, turn up the sound, and get ready for something different. A Prison Conversation Between Two Cellmates, A Cannibal, and A Vampire In a certain maximum security prison, two cellmates enjoy one of their many conversations. If you want a certain flavour, do you go for a certain culture? The other prisoner laughs and replies, No, it is the seasoning. It is only cooking. What I use to prepare the meal. The other prisoner continues by asking a question of his own. So I heard the thirst is like an addiction. Is that true? Do you enjoy it? When and how did you discover you liked drinking it? The other prisoner pondered this for a few moments. Well, it's an addiction. One that I love. I guess for me it started when I was about 19. I tried my own and... I enjoyed it. Nobody knew then, and when I was 22, my so-called crimes started. I mean, I had rules and criteria. I didn't want to become ill from this. My target had to be absolutely clean. STI-wise, I could care less about junkies unless they used needles. You can tell. I mean, I could. Next, they couldn't be sick. No children either. I ended up getting 15 people before they got me. I regret making the mistakes I made, but you can't change what happened. How about you, man? I mean, you had some culinary skill, and you were at it much longer. The other prisoner perks up. Yes, I started when I was 21. I'm now 57. I did what I did for 34 years. I lost track of how many. I am who I am, just like you. I think that's why we are friends, man. I mean, what we both did is similar, and vastly different. Being a serial killer is just one of those things. We both were serial killers. I hated when I was out there doing what I did. The name they gave me? The East Coast Ripper. Then, when I moved west, it was the Western Psychopath. I mean, I don't mind being mythologized. It was actually flattering. But come on. Creativity, guys. Those names don't really provoke as much fear as what I actually did achieve. I know what you mean. They called me the Dracula of Utah, and then the Guzzler. I mean, I laughed. It sounded like I was some fucking cartoon. Or oh, bad horror movie monster. It was all I could do not to come out, turn myself in and demand something more interesting. But I showed control, and I just did my thing until they found me. The other prisoner nodded in agreement. Do you regret getting caught? I don't. 34 years isn't a bad run. I got life, of course, as you did too. I'm content with what I am, where I am, and where I'm at. 
At least I found a true friend, something I never had before. The other nodded. I accept that I'm here forever. It wasn't always like that, though. Took some time. I managed it very quickly, though. I mean, I still want to drink blood. But I have accepted that I can't anymore. Well, I can't eat anyone anymore. That really sucks, but I moved on. I do regret us not meeting before this place. I think I could have introduced you to the delicious world of cannibalism. I think you would have loved it. You could have shown me how fun drinking blood really was. Yet another nod and a smile from the other. Yeah, that would have been something. I bet you cooked them good. Vampirism is fun, but eating someone is where the real fun lies. I did eat one they never found. I never told anyone that, but I trust you. Yeah, man, it's between us. So you just eat it raw? No, I took her and drained her of most of her blood for marinate. I obviously cut her up, seasoned to absolute perfection, marinated it in her blood, cooked her. I had meat for weeks. She was good. This was right before I was found, so obviously couldn't do it again. Sounds like regret, my dear friend. I don't blame you. Don't tell anyone else, but I started killing at 16. They were sloppy. I got rid of the body, so I hunted for more. They don't know our whole story, and it's none of their damn business. We deserve our own little secrets. He gave a wink and a smile. Okay, okay, well, I also did more. Before I started drinking blood, when I was 17, I took five more. Like you, I got rid of the bodies. They weren't found either. You know that punk-ass guard who thinks he's the shit? You mean Walters? I can't stand that prick. You want to kill him? We're respected. And we did in that child fucker a while back. Remember? Yeah, that was fun. How can we do this, though? Walters is a guard. We're inmates. We'll definitely, at the very least, get the hole. Walters will be outside today in the yard. We get him then. Okay, but how? I'd love to kill him too. Realistically, it's going to be impossible to get off after we do him in. We do what we do. They call us sick. They call us monsters. We are that and more. Walters is going to see how truly real monsters are. You hungry? I can eat. I am very, very thirsty. Warning. Two convicted brutal serial killers escaped from prison, mauling three guards and the warden very quickly. Convicted cannibalistic serial killer, 57-year-old Tobias Varner, and convicted vampiric serial killer, 32-year-old Raymond Morris, killed three guards, two of which were armed. The warden, who was leaving for lunch, was mauled as well in his car which the two serial killers absconded with. Tobias Varner, known as the American Cannibal, who killed at the very least 189 victims over 34 years. Raymond Morris, aka the West Coast Creature, who killed 15 victims. Both men committed their atrocities separately from each other. Once convicted, they became cellmates and fast close friends. Varner and Morris killed convicted serial child rapist Marcus Bailey while behind bars. Nobody knows how long they planned all this for, or even if it was done on vile impulse, explaining why the victims didn't have too much time to react. Police discovered the murdered warden's stolen car, abandoned in the parking garage of a large mall. 21-year-old Brian Kane was found mauled and his car stolen, assumedly by the two killers. This carnage doesn't look like it has any signs of stopping. A manhunt for Tobias Varner and Raymond Morris is actively underway. Brian Kane's car was left by the train tracks only a mere 20 miles from the mall. The killers apparently hopped onto an oncoming train. Most recent logs have those trains in the area heading to Minnesota. The FBI was too late once more. The two monstrous murderers have managed to give them the slip once again. 
FBI discovered evidence of escape to Canada and contacted RCMP of the serial killing fugitives. As soon as RCMP had any leads, the two fled Canada. No signs to where they are heading or any indication of the same fact. Somewhere on a beach off the coast of San Juan, Puerto Rico, two friends sit enjoying a meal. The first says, You know, this is delicious. You know how to cook. The other says, Thanks, man. Got enough meat for a month or so, so we're good. Eating raw meat isn't really my thing. Just had to do what we had to do. From now on, we cook them. No more raw. We aren't animals. I mean, we are, but civilized animals. Working together is going to be so much fun. I mean, your methods in taking this one. I... I would never think of it. Experience. You have so much to learn. I never had a student. It is nice to share my knowledge with another artist. Lesson 2. Fake normality. Lesson 3. Change who and how you hunt. We don't want to leave any patterns. Both friends savor their meal and enjoy their drinks as they toast to their friendship alliance as the sun slowly sets. The only thing you can hope for in life is indeed one true friend. I feel very sick. I just have not been feeling well. I think I got the damn flu. Vomiting and crapping my brains out. Maybe if I get some rest tomorrow, I'll be better. Well, it's worse. I can't focus, I am vomiting blood, and I'm shitting some black fluid. That really stinks. What in the fuck? I went to the doctor's, he ran some tests. I'll find out what it is tomorrow. Fuck, fuck, fuck. So sick. That black fluid is now with my blood and vomit, as well as my shit. My skin is turning this grayish blue tint. The doctor called. He sounded... frightened. He told me I contracted this new mutated airborne virus. He told me that he called the CDC, and for me to stay put. I did. Mere minutes later, they arrived and wearing hazmat suits took me to some weird isolated place. They observed me and took notes. I am fucked, aren't I? I slept okay last night. I was fed at least. I don't think I'll be leaving here, at least not alive. The medicine they are treating me with tastes very odd, but it's actually helping. Maybe I'll be okay. I can only hope. Patient 00756. Infected. Being treated. The patient is responding well to treatment. However, so did all the others before they died, after losing brain function and becoming feral. The infection unfortunately ends this way. We have tried to alter the dosage, and things are progressing. We can only hopefully find the definite cure. Then inform the public. The CDC fears an outbreak and mass extinction of what we know as society. However, this mutated airborne virus is being contained, as we've only discovered 22 cases, as well as managing to put a lid on each of them. Patient 00756 unfortunately, succumbed to the virus. However, the period of the poor sufferer losing brain function and becoming feral was only altogether one hour. So, the medicine we are giving is gradually helping. We cremate every infected patient. This virus cannot become a bioweapon. Fortunately, we completely contained it and are using the best protective measures possible to study it. We are discovering that this disease was an altered cousin of the flu. We are beginning to have breakthroughs, finding out how to cure it. It is drastically slowed by antibiotics, along with a cocktail of other medications. And we've made some progress in discovering what eradicates it completely. Soon after patient 00756 succumbed to the virus, we discovered that a cocktail of antibiotics, tranquilizers, antipsychotics, Various flu medications all help. It destroyed the virus and actually cured it. Thank God, because tragically, the virus is no longer contained between each of our logs. It's been progressively getting worse. 
The truth is, it's out there. We need to inform the public and announce that a cure is available. If only... Please, stop laughing. Interview with Grant Smithers. Okay, Mr. Smithers. Do you know why we brought you in tonight? Grant Smithers. <laughs> you think I'm the flaming Ripper? Funny name. Very mean to the victims just because they're gay. Sexual assault on all the victims. I think they are calling you flaming. How does that make you feel? <laughs> I am gay. So I guess calling me flaming would be accurate. <laughs> Mr. Smithers, you're being accused of serial murder. I don't think anything about this situation is funny. <laughs> I'm sorry. On what evidence do you think I'm this so-called flaming ripper? We have witnesses placing you with all the victims. You are the last person to be seen with them before they are found butchered. You also fit the profile of our killer. A young gay man. He was possibly molested at a young age. You were molested repeatedly when you were very young by your uncle and older cousins. They all got arrested and are still locked away. Because right after their sentence and being caught due to your molestation, they were found to have done this to eight other middle schoolers and were sentenced accordingly. Sometime after this all happened, we began looking into these killings again. And only recently did these killings begin once more. <laughs> I am sociable and love hanging out with hot guys. Profiling? Really? Best you got? Stop fucking laughing, you sick son of a bitch. We got DNA. We got your journals, all your fucked up fantasies. We got you where we want you. And when you were with your next victim, we arrested you. You had your fucking killing bag in your trunk. So, it's over. Okay, I apologize, you are right, this is no joke. Everything points to me. Detective, please sit and let's talk. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> you gotta talk to me. You can make this right. Face what you did. Don't let the families of those 22 young men keep mourning. Give them some closure. Okay, honesty is key. You said 22, right? Well, if we are going to be completely honest with each other, there are more than 22. Okay, Grant. How many people did you kill? Okay, in complete total, including the 22 you found, there are 51. Earlier victims? Yes, my first 29 victims. I tried different ways to see what I wanted, how to kill them. I disposed of them all, up in those mountains in that woodland. I buried about 12 of them, then I just scattered the others all over. I am sorry, I can't remember where the pieces are scattered. I do remember where I buried the first 12 though. You don't have to take me, I will draw a map. On one condition. No death sentence. Life. I will waive my trial by jury and just be tried by a judge. No. I think you're lying. You know where you scattered their pieces. I know you do. You took time, Grant. You didn't just randomly scatter anything. You place all those pieces in specific places. You know I'm right. Complete 100% honesty. Then, you get your deal, alright? Okay, okay. I placed those pieces about two miles west from the original burial spot. They're all there. Okay, deal. 51 victims. I knew you were pure evil. Killing anyone, let alone 51 random people, is sickening. You, Mr. Smithers, are no bigger or better man because of your hideous crimes. Do you understand me? <laughs> I don't care about stupid shit like that. I did it because I could. Plain and simple. I enjoyed myself, I truly did. I don't give a damn what you think, what the families of my victims think, or anyone besides myself. I am not sorry and never will be. Congratulations, my confession stands. I don't need a lawyer. In fact, detective, I told you everything. So now I no longer need you. Go get me my paper. I'll show you where and then please 
Take me to my cell if you wouldn't mind. Thank you very much. Detective Summerlin, now completely stunned and speechless, does exactly as Grant requests. Get some paper and a pen. He doesn't know how to respond to this monster before him. Grant Smithers creates the directions as he promised. He then passes it to Detective Summerlin, and the good detective goes to leave. Detective? Closure for those people is nice. I want nothing to do with the families. It could have been your gay 23-year-old son, Fred. It was all chance I spun my wheel. I always won. 51 losers. Great odds for me. Also, I think after I get locked up, you should retire. I may risk any chance of parole by telling you this, but this is no threat. What I tell you, Detective Summerlin, is an absolute promise. If you are still a detective, if by some chance they free me, <laughs> I will kill you and your son, then your wife. No, I mean every word. Good night, Summerlin. Three fantastic stories from Patrick McNamara. A listener just like yourselves. He's been sending through stories via Facebook message, and I'm loving them. Keep up the awesome work, Patrick. You keep getting better and better. Unique story plots, interesting characters, and great dialogue. Loving it. Keep them coming. And speaking of brilliant listeners, I'm going to do some iTunes shoutouts. Because I love doing it, and I haven't done it for a while. Okay, let's get to it. Love it. By Angry Indie from Australia. I recently just picked up this podcast from a friend, and I love it already. Keep up the great work. Lots of purple love hearts. Thank you so much, Angry Indie. Lots of love your way. <laughs> love it by Shalloween from the USA. Shalloween. I love that name. Love this podcast. Found him through Let's Not Meet and have been hooked ever since. Could listen to his voice all day. Goodness, I am flattered. Well, I could read comments like this all day. Thank you so much, Shalloween. That name, gold. Top 5 by Doc911 from the USA. I listen to nearly every horror podcast out there, and you are in my top 5. Well, thank you. One of the few I actually look forward to each week. Great job. Oh, that's lovely to hear. Thank you so much, Doc911. That puts a pep in my step. <laughs> Love this podcast by Lolita Star 29 from the US. Found this podcast only recently and I love it. The narrator has a lovely voice when reading the stories. I suffer from insomnia and sometimes I have to play podcasts just to calm my body down and sleep. Adding this to my collection to listen to. I just feel relaxed. Mate, I'm so glad I can help you with that. I can't imagine how hard it is to deal with insomnia. Goodness. I really hope I can help in some way, and I'm glad if I'm helping you relax. Great to hear, Lolita Star 29. Tanya from Oz. I'm really glad I found this podcast. I love the variety of stories from all different countries and the old time radio. I've been hooked for a few months now. Originally, his voice reminded me of a play school presenter, <laughs> but it's grown on me, and the sound and tone is perfect. Thank you so much, Tanya. And it means the world to me that I could shift from being a play school presenter to a narrator that could keep you interested. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. And if you want to leave iTunes reviews and get your comments read out loud on the World Wide Web, you can do this really easily by hopping onto my SoundCloud page and hitting leave iTunes review. It'll take you to iTunes and then you can click on my little logo and that will take you to a review page. I know iTunes doesn't make it easy. Um, a couple of hoops to jump through, which, you know, to be frank, is why I'm doubly appreciative when I see these podcast reviews. They mean the world to me. And they let others know that it's worth listening to. So you may be helping a lot more than you realize. If you want to reach out to me, say hi, give me feedback, send me stories, feel free to email me directly on storiesfablesghostlytales at gmail.com. And you will hear directly from me. I guarantee it. I always make time for my awesome listeners. And speaking of awesome things, 
I think I'll be jumping right back into some Irish folk tales this Wednesday. So stick with me then. Stay creepy, stay safe. Drink copious amounts of Earl Grey or any other hot beverage and have a fantastic Monday day or a deliciously devilish night. And as always, till next time.